the world is never going to be the same again. I'm worried about the world. The mass chaos and crises that there was in the world, it's going to be just like that now. This is not an accident. How long is it going to last? Longer than even for those of you that have some cash in the bank, way past your cash reserves. Please. Out of a hundred people, four will get the message. This thing isn't going to be over in a few weeks. This thing isn't going to be over in a few months. The most important thing you can have right now is not job security, but meaningful work. And it's our meaningful work that gets us through the hard times. If you're worried about your job, and I understand, can't pay the rent, I understand, can't feed the kids, I understand. But right now the question is, we have no financial education in our schools. Why? Look at the millennials. They're the biggest in debt generation in history. Look at what we've done to our kids. How much financial education do our schools put up? Zero. Is that an accident? That's because our schools were basically built to create workers that will do what you tell them to do because they value this thing called money. And that's obviously completely wrong. And when a time like this happens, it becomes blatantly obvious what's going on with the people that are understanding money and the ones that aren't. It's socialism for the rich. Unfortunately, there's capitalism for the poor middle class, those that work for money. You're on your own. If you own a small restaurant and you got to let go of your staff, you're no different than your staff right now. What does the next three months look like? Because it doesn't look pretty. I mean, people are already being laid off, made redundant. There's no cash flow in most of these businesses. How does that play out? The national debt for World War II was $25 billion. Every day, they're printing $125 billion. Every single day, they're printing so much money to keep, think of a hot air balloon with a tear in it. And they're doing desperately trying to fix this tear, but no matter how hard they try, the tear has gone beyond, it's coming down. In financial terms, it's called our debt GDP has now gone from 60 to 90 to 105, it's going to 120. We're bankrupt. And they're gonna print more and more money, which means savers are losers, just as I predicted. Your money is gonna be worthless in a few years. My message is the same as some of your other guests, this is metamorphosis type. Financial education is really financial transformation. For those of you that can take the heat, one, two, three years from now, you're gonna be super rich. If you're serious about making sacrifice, personal sacrifice, that it will translate into massive amounts of money. After World War I and after World War II, people became wealthy because they took advantage of the situation. Definition of metamorphosis is very important. The evolution or the transformation from an immature form to an adult form. Metamorphosis is the same as a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. And Fuller always said there's nothing to predict a butterfly inside a caterpillar. Everybody listening right now, if you're struggling financially, just think of yourself as a little caterpillar. And this crisis is your cocoon. The question is, what do you emerge as? Do you emerge as a victim? You know, the world did that to me and the, the capitalists are crook and the rich are bastards and all this stuff. Or do you say, oh, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. You're either gonna get healthier and wealthier or you're gonna go bust. Your choice. It sits between your ears, your heart, your body, your mind, your spirit, your attitude. Most people are scared. Most people are feeling pain. They're watching their money go out the window. Some are gonna be able to realize and say, wow, this is the greatest moment of my life where I'm gonna be forced to transform and I can completely look at money in a different way, wealth in a different way, my purpose, or they can batten down the hatches and get the last piece of toilet paper and hold on and keep doing the same behavior. The prison is inside our brains. The financial crisis, as you know, actually started back in 1903 when those guys took over the education system. And so the reason we have so many people in trouble is you go to school and what do they teach you about money? Nothing. Most people are gonna survive through this, but let's be honest, it also could have been worse. So the question is, are you gonna start making choices today about your health, you know, about your obesity, about your smoking, about your habits? Are you gonna start making choices today about your financial education? And are you gonna take ownership for where you're at right now? 
Unfortunately, everything you hear coming out of the media is preaching it's not your fault and the government's going to take care of you and that's just going to set you up to be a slave and then the next crisis is going to hit and the next crisis is going to hit. Fear can paralyze you, but fear can also inspire you. You know, fear stands for false evidence appearing real. When I feel fear, I want to attack. Other people want to run. What is going on in the world right now has never happened in the history of the world. I mean, I knew our leaders were screwed up, but not this screwed up. The crash is bigger than I thought. So in March of 2020 was the biggest crash in world history of the stock market, but nobody knows anything about it because everybody's quarantined at home thinking about virus and, and social distancing and wearing face masks. People are missing out on one of the biggest catastrophic cash heists in the history of the world. They don't even know what's happening. Now, the good news is this is the best time if you're ready for it. I'm going to make a fortune. So I want you guys who are sitting at home, you know, licking your wounds and wondering when you can go back to work and so you can get your lattes and cappuccinos and pizzas. Just know you might be missing on the biggest opportunities in the history of the world because our governments have really screwed up. Something's fishy about this corona crisis. It is something very fit. Why did they have to shut down the whole damn world? And I think it's because they're covering up something very, very big. Now, if you're feeling bad, this is your program. If you're worried about what's going to happen to moi, this is your program. Our right. show today is, a, is the guy with the plan, the man with the plan, Brent Johnson. And I think he has the clearest vision of the future. So I want you to pay attention. I don't care where you live in the world, because I think Brent has as clear a vision of the future as possible. He's going to tell you what he sees coming so you can prepare for it. So if you can understand that, that's why this show is so important, because it's really about the future. It's very important. I want to hear what he has to say right now. Any comments, Kim? No, I just want to hear what Brent has to say, because as we said, you know, we're here about preparing, not predicting. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people have found out the hard way through shock that they were not prepared when the coronavirus hit, and who could have predicted that? Um, but so now we have an opportunity to hear from an expert on what you see, Brent, coming down the pipe. Essentially, what I think has happened over the last 10 years and what I think is going to happen over the next few years is that the world, you know, after the po after the financial crisis, the central banks just got together and just printed and printed all this liquidity. The U.S. is going to be the primary recipient of sucking in all that milkshake, all that liquidity that the rest of the world is printing. So the world, the world's printing money, but that's going to flow to the U.S. is what you're saying. Exactly. But my point is, is that whether you like it or not, the biggest demand for currency out there is the demand for the dollar. And despite the fact that they're printing a lot of it, the demand for it dwarfs the supply. So your thing is the dollar is going to get stronger. It's going to lift the U.S. economy and all yeah. our, our tangible assets here. But what is the demise? When's, well, when's well, it break? I, I think the monetary system is just not designed for the dollar to get stronger. Uh, and what and, it, and as it does so, it's going to just wreck the global economy. I mean, I think the rest of the world is going to just go through really, 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 you know, difficult right. time. Right. And ultimately, that's not good for the U.S. either. So as the dollar continues to get stronger, despite the Fed's efforts to, you know, bring it lower, I think eventually the, the world will have to come together in another Bretton Woods type conference or another Plaza Accord type conference. And I think they'll have to either write debts down or introduce a new currency or reset the system in some form or another. So with the coronavirus, because we yeah. don't know what is coming with that, how do you see what, in, in your world, what impact does that have in the future? They're going to print all these dollars and all this currency. And so when the, the COVID does leave and money is start to flow again, now you've got a lot more money out there and now it's flowing. So that's a, that's a recipe for inflation. But first you get the deflation, you, you print all the money, and then when the money starts to move, you get high levels of inflation because there's so much liquidity now. So I think we have deflation you know, for the next year, 18 months, and then we have inflation after that as, as capital starts to circulate again. I think the euro is probably gonna go away or it's not gonna continue to exist in its current form. I think on a price basis, it goes to at least 80. It's at 108 now, so it probably goes down 25 or 30% from here. I think the yen's gonna go to at least 150. 
maybe maybe the two the dollar is going to go back to its all-time high and i think the rest of the world's currencies even the big ones are going to get cut in half so if you're living in japan that means life will get more expensive absolutely yeah, same absolutely. as euro absolutely fiat currencies trade relative to each other so even if you look at 10 fiat currencies and you realize they're all fiat they're all horrible one of them is going to outperform the other nine and that's what i say with the dollar now gold might outperform the dollar but the dollar is going to outperform all the other nine and you can make a lot of money playing the 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 dollar versus all the other fiat so if you don't want to put all of you i understand owning gold everybody should own gold but if you don't want to put a hundred percent of your money in gold then put whatever you don't have in gold into the dollar or dollar assets because the dollar is going to just crush, I think, all the other fiat currencies.